Hello, I'm Captain Calvin Cat, glorious commander of the USS Dragon... No, I'm kidding. I'm just a disembodied voice, fanfic author and uh, mostly non-reviewer. Love the road, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Now, as is customary, I will allow our guest to fill us in on the details. Sweet! Let's rock it. Released in November 2005 or 2005, the Goblet of Fire is Harry's fourth year at Hogwarts. The school is host to the famous Tree Wizards tournament, but someone puts Harry's name forward and a terrible danger lurks in the shadows. So grab your wand, keep a sharp eye out for the clues, and try not to get distracted by the opposite gender as we drink deeply of the Goblet of Fire. Our story begins with an old man and an old enemy. No! The boy is everything! I've had a cadaver! But what does this have to do with anything, I wonder? Oh, we'll find out. But not just yet. Harry's having a nightmare. But there's no time to dwell, as our protagonists are off to the Quidditch World Cup. Get a grip, dude. The celebrations, and quite abruptly though, as the Death Eaters, all of all these followers, invade the cap grounds. Harry is separated from the group and knocked down. But the trio are never apart for long. Been looking for you for ages! <laughs> and so the maturing Harry settles into his fourth year of school. And what a year! Hogwarts is hosting the legendary Tri-Wizard Tournament. Three schools, three champions. And there's another new defense against the Dark Arts teacher, who teaches us about the unforgivable curses. Now the minister says you're too young to see what these curses do. I say different! You're not too young to learn what these curses do. In summary, Imperius is a mind control curse, Cruciatus is an unbearable pain torture curse, and there is also an unforgivable killing curse. Only one person is known to have survived it. Yes, Harry is the only known survivor of the killing curse. Apparently he was loved. So, the champions are selected. The dome set champion is... Victor Crump! Yeah! The champion for bow battens is Fleur Delacour! Yeah! The Hogwarts champion, Cedric Diggory! Yeah! But oh dear, a fourth name pops out of the cup. Harry Potter! And Harry's selection causes no end of friction. Your name is a couple of fire. Oh, 
not least between Harry and Ron. I didn't put my name in that cup. I don't want eternal glory. And so the day of the first task rolls around. The champions each choose a dragon and set off into battle. Hell of a thing, fighting dragons. I remember this one time that me and Mr. Viking Oh were... no, not another war story. Well, now, if you'd had as many runnings with crazy creatures and fantastical warriors as me, then you'd have a ton of stories too. Harry and Ron reconcile. Yes! Seamus never actually told me anything, so it was, it was really me all along. Ah, oh, touching. And so, before the next event, we prepare for the traditional Yule Ball. Which is all very well and good, but I'd have thought that Dumbledore would have had something to say about the lack of LGBT representation at this Yule Ball. Yeah, but you aren't actually LGBT, are ya? No, I'm not. But still. There but for the grace of Bree. You know what I mean? And so we come to the second task. Harry must dive underwater, transformed by Gillyweed, and recover a lost treasure taken by the mermaids. And it's easier said than done, when we discover what exactly the lost treasures are. And no good deed goes unpunished. But just when everything looks its worst, Harry casts... And for his bravery and heroism, Harry is awarded second place. Oh, yeah, 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 second place, second place, that's great, yeah, yeah, that's just a fancy way of saying losing! Wrong. Better be second place than last no competition of four. Oh, yeah, yeah, hadn't thought of that. Later, in Dumbledore's study, Harry stumbles into a memory. This memory reveals that Ministry of Magic official Barty Crouch's son is a Death Eater. Why is this important? You'll find out in a moment. And so the third and final task begins. The champions must navigate a dangerous maze and find the Tri Wizard Cup. But as ever, it's easier said than done. By pure chance, Harry finds the Triwizard Cup, and he and Cedric race to the finish, only to agree to a draw. But oh dear, the cup was a portkey, and our woefully underprepared wizard has to face down a rather nasty reality. And so the good times have come to an end as the Dark Lord walks this earth once more. The reborn Valdi engages Harry in a wizard's duel, but the power of Harry's magic is equal to the Dark Lord. And besides, Harry has a few friends to help, and so Harry is ported back. But a victory parade, this is not. Dumbledore, what happened? He's back! He's back! Voldemort's back! Professor Moody takes Harry to a side chamber and investigates. But our woeful wizard is suspicious about Moody's interest in you-know-who. And just at the right moment, Dumbledore intervenes. <laughs> and this is why we were treated to the memory of Barty Crouch's son being outed as a Death Eater. Because he's been posing as Mad-Eye Moody all year. And so we close this chapter as the Bobatons and the Dernstrangs leave for home. Thus do we close the book on the Goblet of Fire. But now everything changes, for I cannot put this one into my house of love.
Incredibly, this story is so much thinner, even stretching to its 150 minute runtime, 11 of which are credits. The realities of teenage hormones and social breakages creeps into our tale, and the return of the Dark Lord puts to an end the candy coloured fluffiness that so beguiled us at the beginning of our tale. And yet, this is far from a bad film. It's just as exciting, wondrous and intriguing as any of its forebears, or successors. And just as long, if not longer. Yes, these long run times wear on me personally, but they've never felt drawn out. The pace is always kept brisk, and so it is with the Goblet of Fire. So what did I think of the movie? Very entertaining. Extremely entertaining. It had funny lines, it was scary at moments, the actors did a good job, and if there is one guy who can chew the scene more than chewing gum and overact more than Gary Oldman in Lost in Space, it has to be our favorite doctor, David Tennant. If you are looking for an interesting story, this is yours. And if you are a completionist too, because this movie is the closure of the Silly Potter adventures and the prologue of those adventures that are to come, with all its more adult stuff. But the Dark Lord has returned, and nothing will ever be the same again. But we shall... <coughs> Funky! Are you alright? The magics! They are leaving me! We must end this quickly! M my audience! Thank you for, for joining me! Thank you, Captain Calvin Cat, for joining me! No problem! Let's reconvene in yeah, 14 days. I fear it will take that long to recoalesce the magics. Spellcasting D I. <laughs>